The Gorosei have just blown our minds by showing us that Luffy is going to have to get way, way stronger if he ever wants to be Pirate King in the first place. Because in this chapter, we actually saw some truly insane feats from the Gorosei that completely reshape what I thought about their power levels and also about Luffy's. And so I do think that it's seriously time to start considering these five Elder Stars as some of the all-time top-tier fighters in the entire story. I mean, seriously, did you see Venus Jiro completely wipe out the entire army of upgraded, kind of theoretically undefeatable pacifista? And remember that those clones were supposed to be super soldiers with nearly unbreakable bubble shields and lasers strong enough to wipe out entire fleets of ships. And yet in a matter of minutes or maybe even seconds, Venus Juro galloped around the entire island and cut them all down like they were little toy sticks. But that's far from the only insane demonstration of power that we got in this chapter because while York was taking Mars to the broadcast, room, this deathly bird straight up blasted the entire room with the most powerful beam attack we have seen since the Yonko Kaido wiped out an entire mountain. Like, what? This might actually be even a lot more powerful than that, and I certainly wasn't expecting that kind of insane power from this monstrous death bird. And since this is basically the first time we're seeing any of them fight, it honestly kind of makes me scared and also wonder what other truly broken abilities the Gorosei might might actually still be hiding. And if all of that wasn't yet enough to convince you that these five elders are just incredibly broken threats to the Straw Hats and everyone else, then we even saw Saint Jupiter create an astonishingly power vacuum that was strong enough to even pull back the giant captains Dorian Brogy. Which when you really think about how massive and strong these two are, is just an unbelievable feat considering, I mean, that they are giants. Two of the strongest ones at that. Now, I do know what you're thinking, we have seen a lot of this stuff before and some of it does look impressive, but it's kind of hard to scale in terms of actual power level, some people might say. And for those people I say, I mean, can we just take a moment to really appreciate One Piece is finally back? I mean, Oda is really taking us on a wild ride here. And speaking of a wild ride, in my opinion, the best way to serve the seas of the internet is actually with today's sponsor, Opera GX. I've actually been using Opera for over two years now myself since they first started working with me and I've never looked back. I got this thing called GX Mods, and dude, I decked my entire browser out in full One Piece glory. Picture this, clicking around with sword slash sounds and having Zoro staring back at me from my home screen. It's really a blast whenever I'm surfing. Need to do a quick fact check or summarize something without diving all too deep? It's got you covered with this smart pocket AI right here in the sidebar. Plus, I can just keep watching anime without having to pause whatever I'm scrolling through. I mean, the video pop-out feature is a real game changer literally lets you multitask without missing a beat anywhere. And they even got all that other stuff in the sidebar thing here where you can keep up with all your chats and feeds like X, Discord, and so on and so forth without flipping tabs. And you can even listen to music on your streaming platform of choice like Apple Music for me. And the best thing setting Opera up is the real time skip importing all of your previous settings in seconds. Seriously, if you're ready for a browser made for gamers and anime fans like us, use my link below to download Opera GX today. Let's write those digital waves like the pirates that we are, which brings me, of course, back to this insane chapter. Just listen to this next feed from this chapter, because after Luffy ran out of energy for Gear 5 a second time, he was lucky enough that the giants gave him a tasty mystery snack to recharge. Only to his regular form, that is, and then he launched a massive, incredibly powerful, as we know, Red Rock straight onto St. Mercury's giant head, and remember, this is the same attack Red Rock that Luffy unleashed on Kaido at the end of chapter 1000 and it absolutely crushed the king of the beast, the strongest creature alive. And now compare that to what we saw in this chapter where Luffy's punch actually hurt himself a lot more instead of doing like any damage at all whatsoever to Mercury. So yeah, it does seem like Mercury's tough skin is even harder than Kaido's legendary scales and Conqueror's hockey coating. So, Whew. And all of these feats are 
just piled on top of the Gorosei's seemingly infinite ability to just heal, which brings up some super interesting questions. Like, if the Gorosei are actually this insanely strong, why haven't they ever taken a more active role in eliminating pirates' threats throughout the world in the past? Like, you get me, surely with this level of power, they could have easily stopped Roger from finding Love Tail if they wanted to, or I bet even two of these unstoppable demons could have easily walked in and taken a road poneglyph away from the home bases of emperors like Kaido or even Big Mom. So it all really begs the question, why haven't they done anything until now? Well, I guess the most reasonable answer is that they just never felt like there was a true threat to their secrets from the Void Century or their rule. I mean, obviously when they do sense a threat, they do really act as we know. Such as when they sent Cypherpole to take out the scholars of Ohara. And of course, Saint Saturn came to Eket Island in the first place to take out Vegapunk here because they knew that he was researching the Void Century and was probably gonna turn on them. And so all of that shows that their main goal seems to be keeping the information about the Void Century hidden from the rest of the world. But if that's the case, I do wonder why they didn't think that Roger here was enough of a threat to take direct action against him. As far as we can tell from the events on Eket Island, it does kind of seem that the Gorosei can teleport across massive distances with their summoning circle. So surely they could have just attacked Roger at some point if they really wanted to, right? And I guess we just don't really know why, like maybe Oda didn't have his final plan for the Gorosei powers ready yet, or maybe, let's go with the second option here, the Gorosei knew that Roger wouldn't actually be able to use the information about the Void Century to bring about any change. Either way, it does remain kind of a mystery why they didn't try to stop Roger themselves with their own broken powers. However, you might be shocked to hear then that there is one event that very likely did involve the Gorosei using their demonic powers. And I'm of course talking about God Valley. And if you're wondering why the Gorosei might have gotten involved there, well, for one, we do know that the whole event kind of revolved around the Celestial Dragons, the Raja Pirates, the very infamous and legendary Rocks Pirates, and the Marines. In particular, the hero of the Marines, Garp. But we actually only quite recently learned during Kuma's backstory that Saint Saturn was actually physically present on God Valley as well, so it really wouldn't surprise me one bit if all of the Gorosei actually ended up appearing on God Valley to fight against the Rocks Pirates and keep them from stealing the certain treasure that the world nobles had taken from Hachinosu. And if that is true, it could also explain why Garp never wanted to actually work directly under the Celestial Dragons, because if he ended up seeing the Gorosei's true demonic forms, then I guess it makes a lot of sense that he would never trust them ever again or want to be under their direct command. I mean, seriously, who would want to work for literal demons? But what's more interesting about that possible scenario, plus what we've seen on Eket Island, is that the Gorosei don't really seem to care all that much about Marines or other people seeing their true form. I mean, yeah, they did send most of the forces of the island, but there are still a ton of Marines here running around who did end up seeing their true powers. But since their demon forms don't really seem to be common knowledge, I do wonder if the Gorosei have some sort of memory erasing ability, or even worse, I guess, if they simply end up killing anyone who sees their true forms. Like, they get rid of the Straw Hats and Vegapunk, and then they just kill all their men. I'm really not all too sure at this point, however, keeping their powers a secret could be yet another very logical reason that they don't often reveal themselves to the world. Because, I mean, let's be real, even if they can erase memories or they just kill everyone that sees them, this type of large-scale exposure is certainly very difficult to completely contain without anything getting out. On the other hand, perhaps there is a limit on how often the Gorosei can actually use their powers. Maybe they do have to recharge these abilities or store up on magical energy or something like that. Whatever the real reason is here though, at this point there is no question whatsoever that the Gorosei are easily at least Yonko level fighters or whatever else you want to call the most powerful characters in the story. Like god level? I kind of like that. Which of course brings us to the most important question here. How in the world are the Straw Hats and their allies going to escape here. I mean, 
Does anyone have a good answer here? Because consider the actual situation. Venus Juro just showed up near the giant ship where Bonnie, Frankie and Sanji are and we also see Saint Saturn clawing his way up to the clouds where Nami, Usopp, Chopper, Brook, Robin and the Thousand Sunny are waiting. Then we have Zoro and Jinbei who are surely also headed to one of the ships plus Luffy is still fighting with two of the Gorosei so all of the Straw Hats are kind of being threatened by one of these truly unstoppable seeming demons. And sure maybe working together all the Straw Hats in a unison can maybe hold off one of the Gorosei for a short time, for example maybe Sanji's flames can counter Venus Juro's ice blade, or perhaps Zoro will just show up to hold off the skeletal swordsman himself, and maybe Chopper can find a way to combat Saturn's deadly poison. But looking at their powers in this chapter, honestly by this point none of these ideas can really make a difference for a long time, so instead let's do discuss the actual more realistic ways that I can see the Straw Hats somehow escaping in one piece. And the first and most likely answer here is that the ancient robot that has now fully awakened in the last chapter will do something truly crazy to hold off the Gorosei, like some true display of power of the ancient kingdom. And even though we didn't see it in this chapter, which is a little bit odd, honestly since it is so big, it obviously is going to play some sort of very important large role in the finale of this arc. Now since we currently have literally no way to defeat any of the Gorosei it seems, this option just makes way too much sense. I mean, we don't know the full powers of the robot, but it would be very easy for Oda to give it some truly broken ability itself that actually allows it to deal damage to the Gorosei. In fact, this could maybe even show the crew exactly what they would need to do in order to eventually fight one of them. And I'll actually talk a lot more about powering up with ancient technology in just a moment, but there are some other possibilities first for the crew escaping off the island that I quickly want to discuss as well. There is of course Kizaru, who could do something heroic to give the crew time to escape, or even the remaining Vegapunks could unleash some sort of hidden technology like... I don't know, maybe a self-destructing bomb that could destroy the entire island? You know, something that we have seen previously on Vegapunk's home island and also on Punk Hazard where Vegapunk worked as well. However, no matter how the crew ends up escaping, one thing that we now know for absolutely certain must happen is that the Straw Hats simply need to get much, much stronger still. Because it seems that even Luffy's strongest gear 5 attacks weren't close to good enough to actually actually deal any serious damage to the Gorosei. In fact, there seems to be something we're missing to even permanently damage them in the first place. Because honestly, at this point, it kind of feels like we're back to Luffy fighting against Crocodile without water in Alabasta. You might remember that no matter what Luffy did during that first fight against the Sandy Warlord, he just couldn't damage him at all because of Crocodile's low gear abilities. Now, of course, we would later learn about hockey and elemental weaknesses, which can let you hit low gear users very easily, but until we found that out, it was just a basically hopeless situation. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of how it feels right now as well, but surely it won't just be that way forever, right? Because right now, I can actually see three options for Luffy's next great power-up that could let him potentially challenge the Gorosei later on in the story. First off, he could just have an upgrade to his current Devil Fruit abilities. I mean, I think most of us assumed that Gear 5 might have been Luffy's last major Devil Fruit power-up since it is his awakened form, but there is one idea that you might have actually overlooked so far. That's because as far as we know, all zone devil fruits have actually three forms. A normal human form, a full transformation zone form, and a hybrid human beast form. And while Luffy's devil fruit is sort of special in many ways, it should still theoretically follow these exact three transformation rule, right? In other words, if normal rubber Luffy is his base form and gear fifth is his full transformation, transformation, I do wonder if we could still see a sort of hybrid zone Luffy transformation. And now you might think that those are something like gear second through gear fourth maybe, but I'm actually not so sure. So all this is to say, don't be too surprised if Luffy ends up having another form of improvement to gear fifth to unlock in the future. We even did get a further piece of evidence that gear five is the key probably to hurting the Gorosei in this chapter, because one thing you might not even have noticed is that when Luffy hit Mercury, 
and hurt his own hand, he wasn't even actually in his gear fifth form. And the odd thing is that this is actually the first time he has attacked one of the Gorosei without being in gear five, and it just so happens to be the very first time that he also hurt himself. Is that just a coincidence? Kind of doubt it. So maybe he just needs to be in gear five permanently to hurt the Gorosei at all, or to add on to this, one of my personal favorite gear fifth theories has been that Luffy might at some point just eat a rumble ball or two or three to actually awaken different other forms. Just saying, Chopper's on his crew, Luffy will find out one day that he's actually a low gear fruit user, so I mean, it's gonna happen, right? But that is just the first possible power up that Luffy might unlock to seriously challenge the Gorosei. The second one is actually improving his hockey. Because while Luffy has by now learned advanced form of observation, armament, and conqueror's hockey, there are clearly still a lot of levels to unlock beyond what he can currently even do. For example, Shanks showed us this with the so-called Wi-Fi hockey at the end of Wano, knocking out Green Bull, and even the Gorosei seem to have such intimidating auras that they can literally kill or freeze people in place with just a glance. And so maybe Luffy can finally reach these ultimate hockey levels in a future clash with Shanks, and then his attacks might actually do some permanent damage to the Gorosei as well. But now, the third way that Luffy and the entire crew could actually upgrade to the Gorosei's level does involve ancient technology from the Void Century. Because as we already mentioned, the ancient robot could show us something in the next few chapters that gives us the key to defeating the Gorosei later in the story. And while I don't think that the robot will straight up defeat any of the five elders, if he can even just give us a hint of how to beat them, that would be a massive advantage going forward for the Straw Hats. Plus, we already know that Luffy's drums of liberation in his gear five transformation heartbeat does seem to be the key power source for the ancient technology, the so-called eternal flame. So it would just make so much sense that they find some more ancient technology on Elbaf or even on Love Tail that will help them take down the demons of the world government, who of course also go back all the way to the void century. In fact, this could be exactly why the world government has always forbidden any research into the void century because if the only way to defeat them lies in the ancient history, then it does make a lot of sense that they would want to keep everyone from learning any of those secrets. But now, of course, we can't just talk about ancient secrets without also talking about Vegapunk's broadcast here. And by the end of this chapter, the clock has ticked all the way down suddenly to about one minute remaining before he shares all his information. And all throughout this chapter, we see much of St. Mars hunting to stop the broadcast. First, the Vegapunk York leads him to the broadcast room, which he then destroys with the absurdly powerful blast. And I'm still absolutely shocked by the scale of this attack. I mean, in no way did I think that he would have this level of power. And at first I kind of wondered if it was some kind of technology. However, the beam itself seems to be ringed with black and his kind of like weird fire that's around the bird. But overall, the beam is completely different from the light beams that for example, Kizaru or the Pacifista fire. So it definitely seems to be a unique power to this creature, similar to Kaido's blast breath. But back to the broadcast now, because this doesn't stop the message from actually playing, so York does inform Mars that the actual broadcast might probably come from a new type of Denden Mushi that Vegapunk has developed as well. This information then leads us higher up into the top reaches of Eckhead Island, where Mars actually finds the new Denden Mushi. However, we don't actually see Mars destroying the snail broadcast just yet, because he stops when he hears this odd gurgling sound. Now, the actual sound effect used in Japanese here is gobo gobo, which can basically mean many things, including gurgling or bubbling or basically water splashing through a pipe or through the air. So clearly there is something really odd going on here, especially considering we're up near punk records where there shouldn't be any water. And so it's this sound that leads me to wonder if all of this is actually some sort of kind of elaborate trap that Vegapunk has set for the Gorosei, because just picture this. Mars enters this oddly dark closed off room with the Denden Mushi, then before he can stop the broadcast, the room suddenly seals up and floods with water. So Mars is trapped now. Now, of course, we still don't actually know if the Gorosei are in fact Devil Fruit users or not, but they could still have the same weakness to water one way or the other. And this, of course, could be the key to the feeding them. And honestly, it would kind of make sense that Oda might have been saving drowning for the worst Devil Fruits of the world, because we have basically never seen a single other significant character die of drowning 
throughout the entire story. Or it could also be another type of trap such as the self-destruct bomb that is common for Vegapunk's labs as well. And while we'll still have to wait and see if this is actually possible or not, there are a few other super interesting extra details that you probably have missed in this last page as well. Because literally for the very first time since the Godosei have arrived on Egghead, one of them has actually transformed back into a human form. Yeah, kind of crazy, right? I don't know about you all, but I kind of wondered if that was even possible to transform back casually like this since they were summoned with their weird black magic circles. And so does this mean that Mars is now stuck in his human form? Or can he just freely change back into his Itsumade deathbird form whenever he wants to? It would honestly be super interesting to know that because if they can just freely transform, then that's even more evidence that they are in fact Devil Fruit users, or at least something very similar, and make them even more broken. And I for one simply cannot wait to see what the broadcast actually is that Vegapunk is sharing, because we must be getting some incredibly juicy information quite soon. Like, seriously, Oda has to give us something truly insane from this broadcast to make it worth waiting all this time and make it worth for the Gorosei to come all this way. And I seriously do hope that it is some sort of information about the Void Century and even Joy Boy himself. In fact, we could maybe finally find out what his actual role in the world was all these years ago. Like, was he the king? Just a dude? But what you may not realize is that we actually already do have some major clues about Joy Boy and the people who might have been part of his legendary ancient crew. And if you want to know exactly who they were and who betrayed Joy Boy and kind of what that crew looked like, you can watch that video right here. I promise it's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you next week for another chapter or here in the next one.